Hey everybody, Nick Nack here, back again for another video. As from the title, I'm going to be talking about my top 10 most anticipated games of 2020. Now this year is pretty interesting, as we've got some big hitters from some well-known developers, and some remakes and sequels of some very damn good titles. At first, I had trouble with making this, since at first, I thought there weren't too much titles that I'd be interested in. But lo and behold, there's a whole lot. Before I start, let me state the obvious. One, these are games I'm looking forward to this year. And two, no ports or expansions. So games like the Xenoblade Remaster and Persona 5 Royal won't be on this list. Because they're largely the same game as before. Complete remakes, however, are acceptable since they are new games. So without further ado, let's begin. Starting up the countdown at number 10 is Yakuza 7, or Yakuza Like a Dragon. I'm still a newcomer to the franchise, but from what I've played of Yakuza Kiwami, I have enjoyed it a ton to the point I'm collecting the rest of the games. I just love how the combat plays and how ridiculous it can be with all the side missions and people you can meet on the streets of Tokyo. Now I haven't seen too much footage of this game, nor do I know what's going on except for not playing Kiryu at this time. However, I do know that it's a turn-based game. And personally, I was greatly surprised since the series is known to have beat them up combat. Just for changing the gameplay, as well as the protagonist being a newcomer, I knew I had to put this game on the list. It only starts the list though, because again, I'm new to the franchise. For my number 9 game, I'm putting Tales of Arise on here. Another series I'm a newcomer to, Arise is a game I'm looking forward to a lot because I enjoyed my time with the previous Tales game, Berseria. Despite not spoiling myself with too much footage of it, from what I've seen, Bandai Namco has changed it up as it plays like God Eater with the dodging and controlling only one single character and not a party, which I'm intrigued on how it will work. Also from what I've seen, and from what others are saying, the graphics have improved, and when I look at the world, I'm like, damn, just look at the quality of the environment. Even with being a newcomer still, which is why it's at number 9, Arise looks like an interesting step into a franchise, and maybe this will be a game I can relax to. Coming in at number 8 is Fairy Tale. Now I'm not ashamed to say that I enjoy Fairy Tale, and when I found out that Gus is making an RPG of it, I became surprisingly excited because JRPGs based off anime games tend to suck from what few I've seen, from Inuyasha to Full Metal Alchemist. This game, however, looks promising because it's made by the guys behind games like Atelier and Artanelico, and I've heard those games to be pretty decent. The world looks nice, and exploring Magnolia as my favorite characters makes me all giddy. There's also side quests, and the battle system looks easy to get into. Because it's a good JRPG developer making a game based off a series we need more games of here in the West, Fairy Tale definitely deserves a spot on my list. At number 7 is the Resident Evil 3 Remake. I'm currently playing the Resident Evil 2 Remake still, and at first, I wasn't even thinking of getting excited for this game since Mr. X scares the fuck out of me. 
and I've heard Nemesis is way worse. But as time went on with playing RE2, I really liked what X brought, so I'm prepared for screaming and fear from that motherfucker Nemesis. Now as for what the RE3 remake has shown, it feels like 2, and I have no problem with that since 2's gameplay and presentation is damn amazing. Also, can I just say how better Joe's design is in this game? I mean, I like her sexy wife Bula as much as the next guy, but why in the fuck would you wear something like that in the zombie apocalypse? Overall, apart from that, RE3 is looking great as usual. And let's just hope the success in this leads to a Dino Crisis remake. My number 6 game goes to Streets of Rage 4. I'm not going to go too much into this game since I talked about it in my 2019 anticipated the list, but woo! A new Streets of Rage game after how long? Gameplay looks nice, presentation looks awesome, Yuzo Koshiro is back along with some newcomers to Streets of Rage soundtrack, who I'm psyched for, especially Hideki Naganuma. And Adam Hunter returns as a playable character, which you don't know how badly I wanted him to return. Pretty much, it's looking to be very damn good. I hope that will release, and heck, add guest characters, because most of you will agree that Kiryu would fit in this game, would he not? Number 5 goes to the Final Fantasy VII Remake. I know I shouldn't get too excited over a current Square Enix game, but as the new trailers come out, I'm continuing to be optimistic because what they've shown is good. The presentation looks phenomenal as with most Square Enix games. They brought back various memorable moments from what it looks like of the trailers, and I personally like that they changed up the gameplay because honestly, even though I enjoy my turn-based combat, not everybody likes that, unfortunately. Besides, changing up the gameplay might be good, because the last time a remix gameplay changed dramatically, RE2 was considered one of the best games last year. Even though putting it in various parts is scummy, I have some faith because I know that they don't want this to be as big as a fail as Kingdom Hearts 3 turned out to be. For my number 4, I'm putting Ghost of Tsushima. Except for the E3 2018 footage, I have not seen any other trailers for this game. But from what little I've seen, it looks very promising. I don't really think Sucker Punch has ever made a terrible game, and this one looks like it will be another great Sony exclusive. I like the slow and methodical combat, and the way it was shown in the E3 footage looked nice. The premise sounds way different as it takes place during the Mongol invasion of Japan instead of the Meiji and Sengoku eras most games are set in. And just now, I found out that they're using actual Japanese-American actors to voice the characters, which is impressive. Though I haven't seen too much of it, I'm loving how this game is turning out. And if it's good, I hope to see lots of love for it in the future. Coming in at number 3 is Persona 3 Scramble The Phantom Strikers. If you know me, you know full well this was going to be on the countdown pretty high. I love Persona 5, and I find Dynasty Warriors to be a guilty pleasure. 
So when I found out Omega Force was making a Persona Muso, obviously I got excited. Compared to regular Dynasty Warriors games, this one looks like time was put into it because not only does it look more stylish in presentation, but the gameplay seems to vary with what you can do, and the plot sounds more deep than any Musou game out there. I mean that doesn't surprise me since Peace Studio is helping with it, but hot damn am I excited. With being another impressive looking Persona spin-off game, I had to put this high on the countdown. Now only if they could reveal characters from past Persona games, that would be awesome. As unlockables are main story characters of course. My number 2 goes to Project Soccer Awards. Now the Soccer Awards games are some titles I always want to get into, but unfortunately never have because the first few games are Japan exclusive and I didn't have the money back then to buy so on my luck. So once I found out Sega was making a new Soccer Awards game with it being a soft reboot, I definitely had to show some excitement because it's nice to see Sega show some love to a series that isn't Sonic or Yakuza or Total War and maybe Valkyria Chronicles. Besides it being a new game in the series, this title is looking intriguing as it's now an action RPG with some fun looking gameplay combined with the dating sim aspect that fortunately is still there which I am happy with as I always want to try it. But the biggest surprise from this game I gotta say is that Tide Kubo is behind the character design. Yes, the guy behind Bleach helped with the game which is out of nowhere for me. Even though Famitsu did not give it too much high of scores, I'm still looking forward to supporting this game. I just hope my support leads to past games being translated and brought to West. And finally, coming in at number one as my most anticipated game of 2020, I have to say Cyberpunk 2077. I'm going to be completely upfront with you. I have not seen much of the trailers because I don't want to spoil myself with the full product. However, I bet most of you can agree with me that not seeing that much is a good thing for a product you're excited for. Now some of you are wondering why I'm excited for a game I haven't watched the trailers for. Well, I'm hopping on the bandwagon with putting my faith in CD Projekt Red delivering with this game. Sad to say, but I still have not played The Witcher 3 because I still want to play the first two. But many people consider that game to be the best of the decade even more than Breath of the Wild, so I'm buying into it. Plus, this isn't a sequel to any past CDPR games. From what little I know of it though, it's sounding to be GOTY material with the usual stuff from Western RPGs. Various customization, a massive world set in a cyberpunk setting, hence the name, branching paths, and probably some interesting quests. Despite talking out of my ass for most part here, I think this game will deliver, and I just hope I'll be able to finish it with the work schedule I have, but that's besides the point. So those were my most anticipated games for this year. I know it's a bit late, but hey, it's kind of a drought right now when it comes to new releases, so I think it's okay to release it this late into the game. But yeah, let me know what some of your favorite, most anticipated games are for this year down below. I love reading responses. 
But that's pretty much it. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching. Take it easy. And until next video.